Hola bandidos, welcome to Mel's Magic. This is a bit of a bonus video because I, I felt like my recent video, episode 4, um, I wasn't quite done with what I wanted to say, but I wanted to keep it also within, within a um, short time, the video. So this is a bit of a sequel on my talk about trying to take care of my needs and knowing what I need to do when I know that when I feel that I'm about to get frustrated or tense or aggressive because of this energy I carry inside no so if you watch episode four you know I went for a run this morning because I felt uh, uneasy unsettled in my body a kind of tense energy that I know if I don't take care of it and channel it out through sport, I know it will build up, it will stay stuck in my body and manifest in unpleasant ways, for example, anxiety or tension or aggression even, you know, because the energy doesn't go anywhere, it just either transforms or it is being it is released and that can be either productive or unproductive or it or we repress it. I mean, I used to do that a lot in my life. I used to repress um, emotions and, and let's say this drive to move, I would repress it and actually end up depressed because of it. So I'm not doing that anymore. I'm trying to take care of myself when I, and I try to listen to my body when I feel that I need to move, I go out there and do it. And I'm blessed enough to be in a place where I can literally just you know, put on my running shoes and go and run in the valley, go for a run in the valley. So in episode four, I said, you know, how I was feeling a bit frustrated and I was concerned that my frustration would manifest in a confrontation with my mom. So I went for the run and I'm, I'm, I want to pat myself on the shoulder for kind of uh, minimizing possible damage. Like had I not gone on the run, I know the situation could have escalated between my mom and me. Something completely petty and trivial, you know, would have just triggered me. And there we go again, we would have had this confrontation. And I've, re I've really learned that, I guess the hard way, um, that yeah, the, I can't change the other person. I The only thing I can do is take care of myself and choose as much as possible how I respond. And I try very hard not to react, although it's very difficult because the knee-jerk reaction, that synapse, that neural pathway, the trigger is so instant that the time between trigger and reaction is like minimal and it's just like a shotgun, no? So I'm very... I'm, trying very hard to be self-aware and self-conscious enough to create space between trigger and reaction and to do anything possible to um, de-escalate the situation. So let's say if I know that I'm already a little bit on edge and anything my mom will say is going to trigger me, then I really just take, take myself out of the situation and go release <laughs> the frustration by running, for example. No, But... I must admit, to be honest, you know, it's not, it's, I mean, we know that, no, it's not a straight, growth and change is not a straightforward line, it really takes you, it goes, I don't even know if it has a shape, you know, it often feels like you take two steps forward and one step back, and three steps forward and four steps back, I mean, you know, there's not even a formula, and it's very, very easy to get frustrated, with yourself you know because if if the only control you have is over yourself and you realize though that you try over and over and you still mess up i mean how often have i ended up just feeling frustrated with myself really really frustrated despite my efforts despite my intention to improve for my own sake and for people around me that I, you know, you, I still hit the same walls or there's still the same hurdle, no matter what route I take, the same hurdle manifests. So frustration is a very easy pitfall. And <laughs> I'm mentioning frustration because, you know, on my walks, last few days also, 
I came across these, you know, these mountain piles where people, and to be honest, I still don't know the, the exact meaning of these piles. I think you see them when on pilgrimages and on, on and nature paths, people just build these little stone piles. And I always look at them and they look quirky and I'm like, okay. And I never quite got <laughs> the meaning and I still don't. But the stone pile is significant because in one of those moments of my utter frustration during my, this was a few months ago, a friend on that very day called me and it was interesting because I really wanted a sign. I was like super disappointed with myself and frustrated and I asked for a sign, you know, I said, oh, I wish, I just need, I need some encouragement. And that day my friend called and she called me and she said, Mel, I had a dream about you. And I said, really? She said, yeah, very clear dream. It was you and me sitting by the beach in one of the stone rocky beaches we have here. And you looked really desanimada in Spanish. It's like um, down on yourself. And she, in the dream, she asked me, what's wrong, Mel, what's wrong? And I apparently said, well, I keep on trying to construct these towers but they keep on falling and she looked and saw me with like all these piles of stones and that crumbled around me and she said Mel it's okay <laughs> you know it's okay you can always rebuild your tower look at me and she, uh, she has two children she said look nowadays it's my two kids who knock down the towers and I still accept it and I still go and build a new one. It's okay. We have to cut ourselves some slack. <laughs> and she told me this June. I was like, she had no idea what state I was in. She didn't know I was frustrated that day. And I was like, Maria, thank you so much. You are the sign that I asked for. And she was like, oh, really? I mean, it made her happy. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> it was amazing. So I'm, I'm telling you this dream because these stone piles um, that recently I came across on my path reminded me of that dream and it reminded me to be gentle on ourselves and have patience with the process and with ourselves and to, okay, allow for frustration but not sit in it and really kind of tell ourselves, it's okay, it's okay you messed up an oomph time. It's okay, nobody's keeping score. As long as you pick yourself up and try again. And that ties in a little bit with episodes four, rose bush, bush um, metaphor, no, where I said, the universe always gives you a new opportunity to go about the situation differently. There's a new opportunity for you to try again. Nobody's giving up, the universe is not giving up on us. If ever it's, ourselves who give up on us and that's so sad it shouldn't get to that so I guess we all need to hear a message of encouragement sometimes I hope this is a message of encouragement to you also because um, it's never too late there's always a chance to try again there's always a new situation to forgive to um, repair things to rebuild things and these stone piles although I don't know their official meaning for me, these stone towers um, are a beautiful metaphor to and reminder to take things one brick at a time, you know. If we want to build something, anything, look at the houses we're in, they're built by bricks and it's one brick at a time that creates the, the final construction. And we're all, it also reminded me, we're all building, we're all in the larger scheme building creating our world just like each person who puts that one stone to build the tower and doesn't even know who the next person will be who will put the final um, brick or, or stone it's a nice metaphor to just knowing that we're all building something together and we are even the building blocks of creation no? so not only are we the ones building we are also a brick <laughs> was it uh, another brick in the wall I mean we are the bricks of the of the cosmos no so we're all um, we all have value and we're all part of this beautiful creation and
and um, yeah, I guess it's good to realize the larger perspective and it's good to have some uh, mercy and treat ourselves with gentleness no? and not wallow in frust frustration. All right, this was my sequel for episode two. Maybe I'll call this, um, uh, sorry, episode, episode four. Maybe I'll call this just sequel of episode four. All right, thank you for being here. Um, please like, share and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. Um, if you like, just a little like, it helps my channel grow. If you feel like sharing with a friend, uh, please do and I look forward to sharing more reflections of mine in the next video. Okay, saludos de Javier, os quiero mucho, chao. <laughs>